Welcome to 4.1's Math Moment. Today's students learned about nets and also finding the surface area of cubes and rectangular prisms. So we're going to look at a couple different examples today and I've already written up a handy dandy formula that can help you solve um, to find the surface area for cubes and rectangular prisms only, but it is one that the students might be familiar with and want to use um, depending on what their teacher was using in class. So we're going to look at this first example. This is a rectangular prism because it's a 3D shape and that has a rectangular face on some of the sides. So we have a length of 11, a width of 5, and a height of 6. I encourage the students to write out what is the height, what is the width, and what is the length because it helps them to see and make sure they're using the right numbers in the formula. So the height is 6, the width is 5, and the length is 11. So now what I'm going to do is just plug it into this formula. This formula here shows that if I take 2 times the length times the width and add it to 2 times the height times the width and then I add it to 2 times the length times the height, I'd be able to find the surface area. Surface area is finding the area of every single face on the shape. So finding the area of this face, finding the area of this face, of this one here, the one on the bottom, the one on the back side, and the other side. Even the faces that we can't see, we're finding the area of each of those faces and putting them together. That's how you find surface area. Think about how much would the whole shape need to have covered. That's how we find surface area and what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these numbers into the formula. 2 length times width would be 11 times 5, plus 2 height times width would be 6 times 5, plus 2 length times height would be 11 times 6. Again, for students to try and just put that in on their own can get a little bit tricky, so that's why we encourage them to write out which one is which in each problem. So now we're just going to slowly but surely work our way through the formula. So I'm going to do anything that's on the inside of the parentheses first. So 11 times 5 is 55. 30, or 6 times 5 is 30. Got ahead of myself. 11 times 6 is 66. Right? Now all I have to do is double each one of those. So 55 would be 110. 2 times 30 is 60. So I'm just doubling those or taking them times 2. 2 times 66 is 132. So now all I have left is just to add these three numbers. And I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to put it up here. I've got 132 plus 110 plus 60. I'm going to add all my numbers up to get a final answer of 302. I want to include my label, and because we're working with surface area, we are going to uh, put a square unit with the centimeters, with whatever label they're using. So lots of times students get confused. They think that we want to cube our answer when we're working with surface area because we are multiplying by three different things, but we're still working with area. We're just finding the area of every single face so it is still just a squared unit. All right, let's take a look at example two. In this lesson, students are introduced to nets, which nets are just a flat representation of a 3D shape. So students are asked to identify and look at which nets would represent a cube and which ones would not. So we wanted to include for you today some examples of cubes. All of these nets would fold up to make a cube. One thing to look for is to make sure when you're looking at, with your student at home that all of them have six faces. All right, that's the first thing to look for. Does this net have six faces? If it does, then you start thinking about and visualizing, could I fold this one to the side and this one over? Think about and have your student visualize the dice. You could even have one, if, if you have one from home, pull that out and have them look and see. Could I fold all of these sides together to make a dice or a cube. So they will come home looking with some problems that have them identify whether it is a true net or not that makes an actual 3D shape. So those are some examples for you. Example three is another one where we're going to use the formula. It says, Jane needs to wrap a gift box with wrapping paper. The box has dimensions of seven inches by 10 inches by eight inches. 
what is the total surface area of the wrapping paper needed. So again, we're working with the surface area and it is a gift box, which I can assume is going to be a rectangular prism with these dimensions. Um, so because it doesn't identify which one is the height, the width, or the length, um, we tell the students that there's not a picture, or there's not something to go with there. We still want them to try and pull out what would be each one so they can help, um, so they can use that to help them put it in the formula. So I'm going to say 10 inches is our length since it's the longest one. I'm going to have a height of 8 and a width of 7. Again, even if your student had 10 as the height, they would still get the same answer because with multiplication and addition, the order doesn't really matter. All right, so now I'm going to plug it into my original formula, which is 2 times length times width plus 2 times height times width plus 2 times length times height. And again, going back to that same thought about how order doesn't really matter with multiplication and addition, if your student did length times height here first and length times width here instead, that's okay. Um, they're going to get the same answer as long as they are including both dimensions twice, or all three dimensions twice. So in this formula, I see length twice, I see height twice, I see width twice, and I just don't want to double the combination of when I use it. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in. I've got 2 times 10 times 7 plus 2 times 8 times 7 plus 2 times 10 times 8. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply what's in the parentheses. 10 times 7, 8 times 7, 10 times 8. 10 times 7 is 70. 8 times 7 is 56. 10 times 8 is 80. And now all I have to do is double those problems. I'm going to go ahead and pull these doubled numbers over here. So I know that 70 doubled or 70 times 2 is 140. 56 times 2, if your student doesn't know that off the top of their head, they could pull it to the side and multiply. 112. And then we have 80 times 2, which is 160. So now that I have these three numbers, all I have to do is add them up. So I'm going to take 140 plus 112 plus 160. 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And my answer becomes 412. I look back to see what unit we're working in. We're working in inches. And because I'm finding surface area, I'm going to square my units just like I would in an area problem. This is a lot of steps for finding surface area, but they're simple steps that the students know how to do, those multiplication, to multiplying by two, and then adding. So it does take some time and some diligence with working through the formula. But if you have any other questions about 4.1, please see your math teacher.